Oh, hello everybody, it's Josie here. Welcome back. I am doing another haul today. So the haul I'm doing today is it's actually a little bit of a mix of secondhand and new books, but it's a specific genre, I guess. So I am doing a kind of a dark academia project in the sense that I'm reading pretty much all of the dark academia books that I can find or that I've been recommended because it's a kind of a genre of book um, that I love to read. Um, so the combination of anything where somebody is studying or involved in art or a science, I love. I love school settings. I love college settings, university settings. I love all that kind of thing. Um, at the moment, I'm reading loads and loads of books and I, I've, I've talked about um, the project that I'm going to be doing, but I thought I'd do a bit of a haul as well. So um, I'll show you some of the books. I'll do, I'll probably do two hauls across all of the books that I have, but I'll, I'll do one today and show you some of the books that I've um, purchased and that I found in secondhand shops as well that are uh, Dark Academia, some of which I've read, some of which I've not, and what I love. So here we go. So the first one. I think this is a classic. So The Discovery of Witches. Now, I read The Discovery of Witches many years ago, actually, when it first came out. Um, and I'm really annoyed with myself that I think I got rid of that. Well, I know because I can't find it in my house anywhere. So I'm pretty sure I got rid of that copy, which really annoys me. I'm pretty sure it was a hardback copy as well. But I have really been getting into this lately because I've been watching the TV series, which I love. And this cover is actually the two characters um, as depicted in the TV series. Um, but I love, love, love this. So this is, if you want sort of visual representation of really great dark academia, I think this is a great show. Um, the first season is set um, partly at Oxford. So your main character, she is a professor at Oxford. So actually both of the characters are professors at Oxford. Um, she's a witch. He is a vampire. Um, it is gorgeously, wonderfully romantic, but it is also just this great kind of, she's, she's the love of the main character. She's so studious and, and kind of really into her, like Diana's not fluffy. She's not, um, even the way they style her, I love the way they style her. Very kind of, if you're looking for any dark academia styling tips, it's brilliant, but she's just, oh, she's so kind of level-headed and I just love her. She's just a great, great character. I love her. Um, and I love the relationship between the two of them. And I love the whole concept of it. So this is kind of dark ap academia meets supernatural, which is something that I really love. So um, actually, let me do it this way because um, it makes more sense. Sorry. Anyway, as I was saying, so a dark academia meets supernatural. Vampires. This is another book that involves vampires. And again, this is a gorgeous copy. This I, I got secondhand online. And it's The Keeper of Light and Dust um, by Natasha Mostert. Now, I've read a few Natasha Mostert books. And I love Natasha Mostert. And another one, actually, that falls into this kind of dark academia vein, I think, is, um, oh, oh, God, it's the witch book. I can't even, I can't think of the name. I'll think of the name. But there's a book that she, she writes um, that basically talks about memory palaces and building memory palaces in your mind. It's fascinating. But this one sounded like a great dark academia vein in a little bit like Discovery of Witches. So... It's Mia Lockhart has a secret. Her mother was a keeper, as was her grandmother. Women who were warriors, healers, and protectors. As Mia practices her craft among the fighters and martial artists of South London, she has no idea that a man who calls himself Dragonfly is watching from the shadows. Adrian Ashton is a brilliant scientist, an expert in the field of bio phantom emissions from cells within the human body. He is also a skilled martial artist and a modern day vampire. With the aid of an ancient Chinese text, he has mastered the art of draining the chi of his opponents, the vital energy that flows through their bodies. Mia finds herself drawn to this dark genius, though she um, has given her heart to another. When Ashton targets the man she loves, Mia is forced to choose between them. It becomes a fight to the death in which love is both the greatest weakness and the greatest prize. I just think that sounds amazing. And it sounds a little bit in the vein of Discovery Witches. So. Then the next two, again, Dark Academia with a more, I would say, supernatural leaning these two gorgeous books. So this is V.E. Schwab's Vicious and Vengeful. I have read Vengeful. Uh, sorry, I've read Vicious, which is the first one. Um, and this is about Eli and Victor. And they are at university. And they basically experiment and cause themselves to have special powers or EOs, extraordinaries. Um, and this is all about people that are extraordinaries. Um, and about Victor and Eli basically fighting against each other. What I love about this book is that it is, all of the characters are extremely morally gray. They think they're doing the right thing, but oh my. Um, yeah, their methods, not so, so good. So 
I love this. And then this is the, the second book in the series. So I don't, I haven't really read that much about the synopsis. I don't really want to know because I just want to kind of go in and continue with the story um, as is. So yes, I'm very excited to read uh, Vengeful because people have said that Vengeful is even better than Vicious. So excited about that. Then kind of moving away from the supernatural, we've got this gorgeous book. And again, I've read this. This is A Gathering Light by Jennifer Donnelly. And it is, um, oh God, it's beautiful. It's about a girl who desperately wants to go to university, wants to go to New York and wants to be a poet and a writer, but she's being pulled back by her familial um, responsibilities. Her mother is dead. Um, her father relies on her to look after her sisters. And they live on a farm and, and to kind of keep all of that going and running. And she's kind of torn between, you know, she should get married, you know, stay in the community, um, look after her family and kind of shelve her dreams. Um, and she has this gorgeous this, this game she plays with her friend who I love um, in this book. And they have like a word of the day and they're always doing these words. And she's she's obsessed with books and with writing. And I just it's it's beautiful. It is a beautiful, beautiful, quiet, soft story um, that's a little bit different. But again, I think falls into that dark academia vein so well, but in a slightly, with a slightly different lens. Then another slightly different lens, you've got A.S. Byatt's Possession. Um, now, I think this is just beautiful. Look at that cover. Um, this has won the Booker Prize, um, and it says a combination of intellectual fireworks and ma magnetic readability, which just sounds amazing. Let's see what it's about. Possession is an exhilarating novel of wit and romance. At once a literary detective novel and a captivating love story, it is the tale of a pair of young scholars investigating the lives of two Victorian poets. Following a trail of letters, journals, and poems, they uncover a web of passion, deceit, and tragedy, and their quest becomes a battle against time. Sounds like heaven. It just sounds just ah, uh, sounds like exactly right up my alley. Um, I mean, I just watched uh, Sylvia, which I hadn't. I loved Sylvia Plath, and I've just watched the movie with her, uh, with Gwyneth Paltrow playing Sylvia and Daniel Craig. I know a lot of people don't like it. I loved it. Anything Sylvia Plath. Um, that kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Then we've got this one. This is Hand on the Wall, The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. I also have the other two, so Truly Devious and The Vanishing Stair, which are the first two in this series. I've literally just finished The Vanish Vanishing Stair and it ends on such a cliffhanger that this is going to be read probably in a couple of hours once I'm done with these videos. Um, so this is basically a, a, a trilogy, and I think there's a fourth book coming out as well, of a girl, Stevie, who goes to this um, exclusive schools at Ellingham, Ellingham Academy and um, it is kind of it's one of these um, schools that really lets you kind of explore treats the pupils like adults they can kind of do what they want and they're all very quirky and creative and I love in the first book all the description of all the different people in her house um, it's a boarding school and then um, she, Stevie's actually, Stevie wants to be a private, like a detective, which wants to work for the FBI. She's obsessed with true crime and solving cases and Sherlock Holmes. And I love all that. Um, and she reminds me of, so if you've watched a good girl's, not watched, read a good girl's guide to murder, um, Pip in that. So Stevie and Pip just remind me very much. They're, they're similar characters, just obsessed with this true, true crime and kind of figuring out who done it and very plucky. And I just love, I love the character. I love all the characters in this book. Um, I've discovered a real love for Maureen Johnson because I also finished um, The Name of the Star at the first one in the Shades of London series, which I'm going to continue in as well. But I'm just really enjoying them. This is just easy to read. It's quick, it's YA, but it is fun. I am having a good time with this murder mystery, both past from 1936 which is really cool because the 20s, so 1920 to sort of the mid 1930s are just my favorite kind of era. I love it. Um, and it's just fun to read that old case as well. So yeah, it, this, this, these are great. I love these books. Then this one is Marisha Pessel's Special Topics in Calamity Physics. This is one that always gets recommended to me when I say I love the secret history and I love dark academia. And everybody says you need to need to read this. So this is, she found her teacher dead, hanging by a piece of electrical cord. The North Carolina police think it was suicide. Her former friends, the Blue Bloods, blame her um, for being there, and her father tells her to leave it alone. But the Blue Vermeer is a student of books and can't let a mystery go. But Blue Vermeer, sorry, her name is, but Blue Vermeer is a student of books and can't let mystery go. Because of all her life puzzles, both complicated and intricate, have littered her path, her mother's death in a car crash, a childhood spent roaming from town to town, her dad's serial affairs. Are these the fantasies of a teenager, too lonely or too clever for her own good? Or has Blue stumbled on something so dark, so devious, that her whole world is about to be flipped upside down? 
So this sounds, reminds me of Stevie. Um, so because I love this, I think I'm gonna love this. It might be one of those videos if you like this, but yeah, everybody says it's really good, so. And the next one, you can tell by the cover and the name that I was like, oh, <laughs> prep. So this is Prep by Curtis Sittenfeld. And this is um, Leaf Fiora, is a shy 13 year old when she leaves a small town in Indiana for scholarship um, at Ellet, an exclusive boarding school in Massachusetts. Her head is filled with images from school brochure of handsome boys in sweaters leaning against old brick buildings, girls running with lacrosse sticks across pristine athletic fields, everyone singing hymns in chapel. But as she soon learns, Alet is a minefield of unstated rules and incomprehensible social rituals, and Lee must work hard to find and maintain her place in the pecking order. Then we've got Joanne Harris's Gentlemen and Players. Again, this is one that has been recommended to me a lot. First of all, I love Joanne Harris. I've read quite a few of her books. Second of all, um, this, people always say this is a bit like you know, in the vein of kind of Dead Post Society and Riot Club. So at St. Oswald's, an old and long established English grammar school, this is a boys grammar school in the north of England, a new year has just begun. For the staff and the boys of the school, a wind of unwelcome change is blowing. Suits, paperwork and information technology rule the world and Roy Stately, Latin master, eccentric and veteran of St. Oswald's is finally reluctantly contemplating retirement. But beneath the little rivalries, petty disputes and everyday crises of school, a darker undercurrent stirs and a bit of grudge hidden and carefully nurtured for 13 years is about to erupt. fantastic. And then the last one, um, oh, abused this cover. It's such a beautiful cover too. Is The Betrayals by Bridget Collins. I can't remember which, but I'm pretty sure I've read Bridget Collins' book, but this is a stunning cover. And believe it or not, I picked this up at my Tesco while I was doing the weekly shop during lockdown because that I was so depressed and they had books and I was like cool you have a look um so this is and also can I just let's talk about that reminded me of 1920s art deco which had me from hello and then look at that book naked isn't it stunning anywho so this again um besides the fact that it's very pretty it says at Montvert, an exclusive academy tucked away in the mountains, the best and brightest are trained for excellence in the Grand Jeu, an arcane and mysterious contest. Leo Martin was once a student there, but lost his passion for the Grand Jeu following a violent tragedy. Now he returns in disgrace, exiled to his old place of learning with his political career in tatters. Montevere has changed since he studied there, even allowing a woman, Claire Dryden, to serve in the Grand Jeu's highest office of Magister Ludi. When Leo first sees Claire, he, see, he senses an odd connection with her, though he's sure he's never met her before. The bond between them is strengthening, but both Leo and Claire have built their lives on lies, and as the legendary Midsummer Game draws closer, secrets are whispering in the walls. Oh God, sounds so good! It sounds like an adult, Harry Potterish. oh, I don't know, it just sounds fantastic. So, yes trails um so that is it that's it for now um let me if know if you've read any of these if you recommend anything if you think anything dark academia wise you think i'd like and i should include in my project and i'll do another haul because there's a load more books um thank you all for watching have a good day keep well and safe bye